So in the modern mystery school, uh, we often talk about archetypes. Archetypes are very important to us. They're representative of certain energies. And they're uh, always based on male and female, masculine and feminine energies. And for example, you might have a, an archetype, a modern day archetype would be Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman. These are modern day archetypes. The Shining Knight, Superman's the Shining Knight, who you know, is nicknamed the, the Boy Scout and always does the right thing, stands for truth and justice and, and stands up for what's right and, and you know, never lies and, and would never break those rules. Where Batman, for example, he uses fear, he uses the criminal system the way criminals behave, he treats them that way. He kind of, you know, brings their weapon to them and uses it against them and makes them terrified of him. He's kind of lurking in the shadows, making them afraid of what, what's going to happen to them next, the way they would do to a victim. Uh, Wonder Woman is the empowered goddess, you know, who, who shows what the true power of divine feminine is. So on and so forth. Archetypes uh, matter to our magic. They also give us the ability to understand ourselves and understand others more clearly. So, you know, you might say, well, what, how does transgenderism fit with archetypes? It generally doesn't fit with archetypes. That's the point. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the archetypes erase a transgender person's belief in themselves. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. It's identifying aspects of us and where we want to align with those archetypes. You may not want to align with certain archetypes. There might be others that you might want to align with. In many ways, we could even say uh, to society that Jesus Christ has become an archetype. And that's where the concept of what would Jesus do? Uh, if you were acting as Jesus, what would you do? You're coming from a certain energy. It's very, it's very similar in its archetypes. It holds a place and an understanding about what that thing is. And so... Uh, when it comes to transgenderism, you don't have to destroy archetypes to exist as a human being. Uh, the archetypes are important for humanity. We need our heroes. We need, we need the strong man, and we need the, the virtuous woman, and we need as all these different aspects. We need the warrior woman, the warrior guy. We need the guy that can heal. We need the, the, the woman that can love. We need the insight that comes from archetypes. And we need them to, to stay pure to what they are so that they can serve us in who we are. They serve us in the magic of transformation. That doesn't mean that you become an archetype, so to speak. And it also doesn't mean that you as a human being are suddenly lesser in some way uh, because you don't fit into a particular archetype. We don't have to be an archetype but we need to understand what those archetypes are because there are times we might want to embrace them. I, I need to be a little more like this today. I need to be a little more like that. And those, what you need to be a little more of or a little less of needs to be very clear about what it is. It needs to be, it, there, not a lot of ambiguity. Ambiguity is what generally you are. As a human being, you are full of ambiguity. So archetypes hold certain positions, firm like rocks, so that when we are in ambiguity, when there is confusion, when we're looking for our northern star or way through a door, we can look at the door and the door is firm. It's, the archetype is firm. We say, let's try that way. Let's use this energy. You know, because sometimes, sometimes the world needs a little more John Wayne. You know, it just, it's just what it needs. But then there are other times that maybe it needs a little more Liberace. So, but if I turn Liberace and John Wayne into one thing and I homogenize them, then I lose both of them, and they're neither, neither one or what they are. So archetypes are very important for us, and archetypes are divine masculine and feminine energies. And for me to be a balanced male in my 70-30, I need to know what these archetypes are so I can work with them, uh, so I can adjust, grow, transform, embrace more of, embrace less of these archetypes. Um, you know, it's kind of like saying to an artist, uh, one aspect would be, what is your muse? What, what inspires you as an artist? Is there a person or a thing? Well, that person or thing, in whatever it is, needs to hold a certain representative energy to inspire the artist. And if that energy was not different from other things, it wouldn't be a muse. It wouldn't be different. It wouldn't inspire the artist because it would all be the same. It would be like one thing. So archetypes are very different, and they're very needed to have that 
that, that different structure to work with. You know, we, we need to understand where things sit and why they are a certain way so that we can then engage with them in the way that best suits us. And that will be different from individual to individual. So in general, archetypes serve us as individuals. And it's an aspect of higher magic. It's an aspect of walking a path of greater understanding to know thyself. Um, and it's, it's important, and these archetypes have been used uh, for thousands of years. And so the desire to destroy archetypes is never beneficial for humanity. We just need to understand what they are uh, so that we can make use of them in the, in the best way for ourselves as individuals.